Hi, this is Chris Jobling with another of my uh, pre-class uh, screencast recordings, presentations. Uh, and this one is on canonical forms. Um, this is part of uh, week eight, and we'll be taking two presentations to cover the material that I've got for this particular week's activities. Um, we're going to be talking about canonical forms, which are, are a sort of standard ways of representing systems in state space form. Um, very useful if you haven't got a, uh, a physical system in mind and you've chosen your states based on the physical equations but you just have a transfer function or a uh, differential equation you want to get a, a state space model that has certain properties. So they're sort of standard forms that you go through, there's no unique solution, no unique state space model. Um, lots of ways you could transfer transfer function or state space or differential equation to state space. And so these canonical forms are, are the sort of recognized ways, if you will, of, of representing systems. As I say, there's going to be two sessions on this, and we'll try and do a lot of the work in, in the class sort of work solutions for things. But uh, in this particular part one, I wanted to introduce you to the idea of a canonical form by looking at what's called a companion form. The particular form that we're going to be looking at today is called a companion form. And so I'll go through the derivation of that, um, and then we'll have an example. And then in the class, we'll, we'll actually work through the, the, the mathematics on the board so that you, you can get a feel for how these things work. So the problem we wish to solve uh, is either going to be represented in the form of differential equation that we want to convert into a state space model, um, such as this one. So you can see here we've got derivatives uh, going from the nth derivative of y uh, all the way down to the, the y variable itself and then an input on the right hand side. And all of these terms apart from this one which is a coefficient of 1, all these terms have uh, coefficients sort of match the, the order of the differential term that it that goes with the y. So you can see a n minus 1 goes with b n minus 1 and so on down the, down the line. And often we can, if we've got a linear system, we can re represent it in this format. So what we want to do is convert this into a state space form. And the first form I'm going to show, show you in the class is what's called a companion form. And it's based on the sort of models that we've already derived in the, in the previous lectures. Um, but we'll go through the mathematics uh, in detail in class. And what happens when you convert this um, tran differential equation, if you rewrite it in this form, you can get a transfer function representation of it. So the dif differential terms become powers of s, and so we have the equivalent transfer function model would be y over u, which would then be b0, the coefficient here, divided by the coefficients of the descending powers of s. And these coefficients here match the coefficients in the transfer function. So there's a one to one mapping between these two. And B0 here is, is there. If we define our phase variables to be the state, uh, sorry, the state variables to be what are called phase variables, so x1 is y, x2 is dy by dt, and so on, so xn is dn by dtn then we get the, the com what's called a companion form representation of the model. And that will basically look like this. So it'll be a matrix. The matrix will have all zeros in this block here. So we have this block where everything is zero. And the lower triangle block there. Then we've got the diagonal, the diagonal which is of ones. And then at the bottom, we have the coefficients of the transfer function or the differential equation in ascending order of the subscript. So we change the direction. It goes from minus a0, which corresponds to my x, x1, all the way through to minus an minus 1, which corresponds to xn. And for the y variable, for the output equation, y is x1. So or, or that's the obvious uh, choice to 
y equals x1 gives us uh, 1, 0, 0. And then for the D matrix, the D naught term appears in the bottom cell along with xm dot for the, uh, for the D matrix. So that's fairly obvious, and we, I'll show you, and we'll actually prove that in, in the lectures by going through it on your board. The block diagram of that canonical form has this structure. We've, we've sort of stylized the representation a little bit. So we've got the state equations with different integral terms running along in that direction. You can see x1 there, x1 is equal to x2, which is x2 on dot and so on. And then at the bottom, at the top end, you've got x to the n dot, which is the actual equation. You can see all the coefficients then feed into that, that equation there in this manner and they're all negated at that summing point and then we've got the input fed through P0 into the into this equation. So this this summing point represents the output of that summing point represents the actual differential equation and all these other integrals are just there to define the the uh, the phase variables all the way down from the nth phase variable all the way down to x1 which is equal to the output of the system. So this is our block diagram and this is the representation that we get uh, and we just take we're just adding all these together and then summing them at the end to produce the, the equation that we wish to solve. So that's the companion form and that's what it looks like if we want to model it in state space. Uh, using Simulinx A or some other block diagram tool. So the next next thing to think about is okay, so that, that gave us the uh, equations of motion for or a state space model for a system which had no derivatives in the numerator, but what if we do have derivatives in the numerator? In this particular case, as you can see, we have now derivatives of s appearing in the numerator of the of the uh, transfer function so this is this is what we had before just the b naught but now we've got all these other terms as well which which give us differentials of the uh, terms so how do we solve that this type of system is called strictly proper uh, it's strictly proper because the order of the numerated polynomial is less than the order of the denominator polynomial. And so what we get is a essentially a strictly proper fraction if you want to look at it in that way. So how do we convert this into a state space model? Um, we have to do a little bit of trickery but I'll show you in the in the class how that tri trickery is done and we'll end up with a, a slightly different model which will look like uh, next slide. And essentially, what happens is we, we get takeoff points now from the uh, from the states feeding through to the output in this sort of way. And where these b coefficients, which are the original coefficients of the uh, numerator of the polynomial, those those come in like that. And I'll show you. I'll, I'll prove this to you in the in the class. Um, now the reason why these two forms are called companion form, as, a, as an aside, is because the coefficients in the state space model, as we'll see in the next slide, so we won't see in the next slide, but we'll show in the, in the lecture, but you see in this block diagram the coefficients of the numerator terms and the denominator terms appear as gains in the state space model here so those they're, they're companions of the original differential equations if you if you like there's an obvious one-to-one -one relationship between these two um, um, definitions and the last the form that we'll look at in the in the lecture I think will be the what's called a proper system this is where the order of the numerator is is equal to the order of the denominator um, we have to do a little bit of uh, pre-multiplication. We have to take this bn term out initially, and then 
if we do that, what happens is we change the uh, coefficients going through the B matrix uh, to C's. And we'll show you like that. And then we get this additional term, which is the D, which is the pre direct connection from the input to the output. So this is how you would get a D matrix from a transfer function if you had that. That's it's basically comes about when you have this this proper system where the order of the numerator is equal to the order of the denominator. Doesn't occur that often in physical systems, but it is something that could occur and you need to be aware of. So we'll show you how this one is developed as well in the class. And then to sort of conclude the lecture, um, we will go through this example where we have a system transfer function, a proper transfer function, and we will get uh, determine the state space model for this um, by inspection essentially, so that we can see the uh, the way that these companion forms work. So that's the end of the pre-class presentation, and in the class we'll work through all the three cases that I've introduced in this lecture, and we'll complete the com worked example, and then we'll move on in the next class to look at the other possible companion forms. So thanks for watching again and we'll see you in class in a few days time. Bye bye.